What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Cardboard from Mars, Episode 4. It's been a long time since we've done a strategy video, and we thought it was time to do it. Uh, this is uh, Nima, as ever, with uh, my friend and partner, Nate. Life partner. <laughs> Hed hetero life partner. Um, yeah, so today we're going to go through all the corpse, uh, just kind of... Talk about what we like about them, what we don't like about them. This is going to be a little different, as you can already tell from our previous videos. Uh, those videos were a lot more kind of structured and formal. Uh, this is going to be kind of loose, and we'll, you know, just kind of a couple guys hanging out and having fun talking about this stuff. So why don't we get ahead and get started and talk about what we have on the screen there, the uh, Beginner Corporation. So... If you're brand new to the game, this might be where you want to start. Um, as you can see, it gives you 42 money to start with and 10 cards to start with. Like that's so. We obviously never we never play with Beginner Corp, right? But it's it's not a bad place to start. What do you think, dude? My hot take is that Beginner Corporation should be banned. <laughs> that's a hot take. Yeah. I mean, Why? Okay. So first of all, like. It's not fun at all. Like, look at it. It just says beginner on it. Like, it's, there's no photo. There's no, like... I mean, yeah, it's dry as hell. Yeah, and and, uh, and second, it's deceptively powerful. Oh. Because 10 cards for free, essentially, like, it's worth 30 cash on its face. Yeah. That's like starting you with 72 cash. And, and the way that it, so like, I don't know what the actual official rules are, but the way that it works online is that you get to choose whether you want to be the, or you used to be able to choose whether you wanted to be the beginner corporation, like, or, or not, or, or, and you get yeah. to look at your cards. Oh. Well, I would assume that's official then. So yeah, I mean, yeah, having 10 cards to start with is pretty good. Like, we, we've talked about this a bunch of times where it gets you to planner really quickly as well, right? Yeah, and I actually so, think that the the planner milestone was was literally yeah. like designed for the beginner corp. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, the the idea being, uh, the trade off is you don't have a special ability, so here we'll give you a bunch of cards. Yeah, like, like the you... way the way that money works in this game, like money is is so much more valuable early than late because of the way that like stuff compounds you know so like if you if you get to keep 10 cards and let's say that like six of them are good you know like then you just have 42 cash to start the game like that's just really good that's a lot yeah it's i mean what if they're not good well then it sucks <laughs> <laughs> so like the, that's the thing with the the beginner corp doesn't have much chance for doesn't have any chance for built-in synergy right so like if i'm thorgate and i get uh you know a bunch of power cards and it's like oh well this is pretty good for thorgate but if i have those same power cards beginner corp it doesn't make any difference um you still might go after those power cards and it still might be good but it's not that extra oomph you know what i mean i mean here's the deal like Beginner Corp is lame. You should never play it. Like, people don't need their hands held like this. Like, okay, you're new to the game, fine. Like, is it that different to start with Credit Corp or, like, some other thing? Like, I mean, I know that some of the guilds are, or, like, the corporations are more difficult, but, um, like, hey, man, you know, Terraforming Mars is not for the faint of heart. Like, it's, you know, like, anyway, I think this corporation sucks, but it does establish the the baseline 42 cash, right? Like all the other corporations, at some level, you're going to compare them to the beginner corporation starting cash, right? So like if a corporation yeah. starts with less starting cash than the beginner one, that already tells you that that the designers of the game thought that the abilities that were on it were so powerful that they needed to start with less starting cash. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, some of the really powerful corps don't start with much starting cash, and it's like, well, that makes sense, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I I do agree. Beginner Corp kind of sucks. Like, well, I obviously never play with it because it's boring, but, like, I wouldn't fault someone for doing that for their very first game. It lets you see more cards, you know. It, it gives you a 
a bigger sense of what's available to you. If it's if you've never seen any of the cards in here, I think it's a decent way to go. But yeah, it after that you you might want to. I think it's like playing apples to apples. Like you you should never play that game. You should never <laughs> play Beginner Corporation. Like it's like when people say like I'm a gamer. I play Settlers of Catan. And you're just like. You're not a gamer. <laughs> oh, throwing shade. Yeah. Oh, man. For the record, anyone watching, if you like Settlers of Catan, that's fine. We... <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We, I, I agree. All right, let's talk about, um, let's just go, I guess, alphabetical order here. Credit Core. Boom. Now we're talking. Credit Core. On the Terraforming Mars power rankings, I'm, I'm just going to come right out. Hot take number two. Credit Core is the most powerful corporation in a vacuum. It's it is often I mean, yeah, we, we often say that. Like it's hard to disagree. Um, well, first of all, why don't we just like go over what Credit Core does? So it's like, okay, you start with fifty seven money. Um, so after you pay for any card with a, it can be a standard project or any other basic cost card that is worth twenty or more, you get a four credit discount. So this can be huge. Um, like, yeah, it's the, first of all, that amount of money you start off with is just crazy. That's a huge amount of money. I, it, it affords you a lot of flexibility. You get, you know, you can do almost anything you want at the beginning of the game. Yeah, it's so much money that you can even you can even have uh, credit core as like your opening corporation, and you can still play things like IO mining industries, right? Like. Right. You, you know, like you still have enough money to play these super expensive engine cards on turn one. Whereas like yep. if you're playing a corporation with less money, you, you know, you may have to take a turn off or even several turns to set that sort of start up. That's right. Yeah. Like I think that maybe that interactor is the only corpse where you could possibly even do pull that IO mining play. So one of the other, um, one of the other great things starts you with sixty cash. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. Then, so yeah, one of the other great things about Credit Core, and I sort of mentioned this, is um, doing standard projects. Now, normally, standard projects aren't something you really want to focus on, and uh, in any case, but if you manage to get yourself uh, the standard technology card, um, that gives you three money back for any standard tech you any standard project you do and a lot of these cost more than 20 so if you do you know put a greenery down with just money credit core already makes that four cheaper so now you're at nine um i forgot anyway it makes it four cheaper and then you get three more back from this card so you get seven money back for every for every standard project you do over 20 credits so it's really powerful that way yeah and it's worth noting that um because of the way these things are worded, um, it works the way you want it to. Like the 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 rebate from one will not reduce you below the threshold for the other. Right. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, I don't know. We've we've had a lot of luck with Credit Core. It's it's a really good corp. Um, it doesn't have any starting tags on it, which is probably as it should be to to balance it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just. It's kind of, I don't know, what do, you, do you think it's like one of the more fun corps to play? No. Yeah, honestly, I was about to say it's not like super fun because it doesn't give you a focus. It, you know, it's, it's just kind of wide open. That's why it's good. Yeah, that's why it's good. I, I mean, it's so like if you, think about, um, if you think about, you know, the spectrum of corporations, you know, there's, there's glass cannons. You know, there's like Phobolog, and we'll talk about Phobolog later, but basically, you know, Phobolog is the type of thing where if you have the right cards in the beginning, it's just it's just insane. Like, it gives you such a huge boost, but if you don't have the right cards, it's terrible, right? Yep. And so, you know, there are corporations, if, if you said, hey, what's the most powerful corporation, and you get to pick five cards to start with, Credit Card Credit Core would not be the most powerful corporation. Like, there's clearly... Right synergies that can be created with other corporations that would be more powerful but if you just were going to start a game and and you had cre- and you had to choose a corporation not knowing your opening 10 cards credit core would definitely be it because you start off with so much cash 
57, but the ability is amazing, right? Like in a, in a game of Terraforming Mars, you're going to activate this negative, you know, this four, four cashback rebate on cards over 20 or standard projects. You're going to do that at least six times. You know, I, I mean, that's from, debatable. I mean, you know, like it's not often you're going to be able to pay, play the really expensive cards. I mean, you might, but like, I don't, I don't know if I would agree with six times. I don't know. I think your baseline on that card is is five or six. I think, I like, I mean, I think you, and if you end up going into space or something like that, or if you get, well, some, yeah, or if you get standard, you know, standard technology as we already talked about, like, and you start doing more standard products, like, you could activate it twelve times. I, I mean, I think that like. You know, I think five is a pretty conservative estimate for the number of times you can activate this in a game. Yeah, but yeah, I I, I totally agree though. Um, in a vacuum, when you start with unknown cards, credit cards is just so good because it gives you the options to pick whatever you want. Yeah. So yeah, I to I totally agree with that. Um, I guess anything. I mean. Anything else to say about credit core? I mean, I agree. I mean, it's does, just not the most fun. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's just raw power level. It's, it's right. Fine. I mean, does it? Is there any weaknesses with it? I mean, I don't know. I don't know that there really is. I mean, the only the only time that credit core that I've I've felt underwhelmed with credit core is when you end up going into more of like a building tag strategy and you're just trying to get a whole bunch of like cheap building tag cards. Yeah, that's even, right. When you're yeah. even then though you still end up using that ability four or five times in a game, and that's still just 20 extra cash on top of a huge starting amount of money. Right. Yeah, and that's that's the only weakness I see is if, if you're going for a strategy that's a lot of cheap cards, Yeah. then you're just really not taking advantage of, of its ability. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's like when you compare it to some of the other corporations, we can do that later. But um, starting with 57 and let's say your your medium case use is uh, 20 cash back in terms of this ability. That's like 77 starting cash. Like that's that's good. I just yeah. think it's really it's just raw power. It's just really good. But. Yeah, so there you go. Credit core. It's a beast. All right, here we go. I'm going to surprise you with the next one here. Surprise. Helion. Helion. I, I, I like Helion. I have a soft spot for Helion. Okay, so what's its deal? It's a three, you start with heat, three heat production, 42 money, and one of the best and biggest deals of it is its effect, which allows you to exchange heat for money, one to one. So that's pretty sick. Like, on its surface, this looks like a really good core because you basically start with three money production, right? Um, so, I don't know what's what's your initial feelings about it. Uh, you know, Helion is a corporation that I I just think is not that good. I, I um, would you say you've cooled on it? <laughs> <laughs> well played. Um, I know dad jokes for the win. Well, think about it compared to Credit Core, and and honestly, like if you exclude beginner corporations, I think Credit Core actually becomes your baseline. You know, like just no tags. I mean, medium ability, like good, solid ability, just like flexible. Like Helion starts you with three money production, but Credit Core starts you with 57, right? So right away, there's 15 cash difference. It takes till generation five with Helion just to get back, just to get to the level that, that Credit Core starts you at. And yeah. that's it's true that the game's going to go five more generations, so you're going to end up getting you know an additional 15 cash over the long run. But the thing is that 15 cash in the beginning is worth so much more money. You know, imagine, you know, like simply the difference between playing IO mining on turn one and turn two is by itself 10 cash, right? So, or uh, uh, eight Nine. cash, sorry. So like, right, if you're playing Helion, you can't play IO mining on turn one, right? So, but you wouldn't you wouldn't want to with Helion. No, so but I'm like, just saying as an example of like how how having that extra cash in the beginning yeah. generates you more cash, right? So like having right. money early is just so much more powerful because it lets those engine cards have a longer runway to to like come to fruition or whatever. Yes. Okay. Like so, I I I understand what you're saying. I, I agree. Like it. 
a pure like money power wise, Helion is not as good. But like nothing, nothing is as good as Credit Core, with the exception of possibly Teractor in that regard. But yeah, like, let's say, let, that's true. let's say turn one, you're healing on, and you get Soleta, for example. Um, you know, Soleta costs thirty-five. It gives you seven heat uh, production. Seven heat production for Helion is seven credit production, right? So like, that's pretty awesome. Uh, what what card in the game? I don't think there's a single card in the game that gives you seven mega credit production, right? So like that's one that's the th and there's a lot more cards like that too, right? That give you a bunch of heat production. Well, that is that is the 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 main sort of draw of Helion is that there's cards like carbonate processing, you know, like things. Yeah. The, the idea of getting money production under costed you know ghg factories yeah uh things like that um the problem is like in practice it just doesn't usually work that well i mean like these cards are good but you need power for them right so like by the time that you actually you know sort of spend a few generations like getting your power going and then like trading off your power for these quote unquote undercosted heat cards, then you've built up some economy, which is good. Um, I, I don't know. It, it just like starting at 42 and it's just not that great. I mean, I guess the thing is the other thing that's tough with Helion is that it's really hard to find the right balance between using the heat for money and using the heat to bump the actual terraforming parameters. Yeah. And I think that in the hands of a very strong player, Helion can be really good. Um, it can be good. If, if you have the right cards in your opener and you have a player that really knows how to shift gears to take advantage of Helion. But I think that like watching a lot of players play Helion, they, they just end up getting confused about how much should I devote to terraforming and how much should I use as cash? And um, and they end up kind of taking a hybrid course that doesn't maximize the power level of either one. And they just it just ends up being overwhelmed by more linear strategies. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, like, I don't know, the, w the way I personally look at Helion's money ability is it's kind of, it's a reserve. And you kind of said that. It's like, Oh, I need an extra bump to my economy. Here it is. Otherwise, I can use it for my heat. Um, because terraforming is important still, right? You know, that's a important thing for all corps to do. So, uh, yeah. I, but if you can use it for a big bump to your economy as well. So I, I agree. It, it says is a little bit higher skill ceiling than it immediate than is immediately apparent with Helion. Um, it is important to know when to use that heat for money and when to not use it for money. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just think that um, Helion, the way I would summarize it is that it's a, it's a combo corporation where the payoff is not that great, right? So, like, like if you compare it to some of the other ones, and again, I'm just going to mention... Um, Phobolog again, right? Phobolog is a combo corporation as well. You know, you start off with a bunch of titanium and your titanium is worth more. But like, if you have the right cards with Phobolog, it's insane. Like, if the combo comes to fruition and you have yeah. a couple of ways to get titanium production early and this and that, or you get advanced alloys to go with it, it's, it's an amazing combo. Whereas like, I feel like with Helion, even under like most circumstances, even with a good set of cards, the combo potential is, is not, it doesn't like, I don't know, it doesn't, it does, I don't think it gets you to a broken place. It just gets you to a good place. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Like it, the more I play this game, like the less I really like heat. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, a heat as a singular, singular strategy, it just feels weaker. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't know. I, 
don't you want to bring the heat, Nate? This is like this is how you do that, man. You bring the heat with Helion. Well, I think we should give these uh, corporations grades too. We forgot beginner corporation. I'm just gonna give it an F, unplayable. <laughs> uh, like you should never play that. It's embarrassing. Uh, Credit Core, I think we should give a, just a, a just an A. I mean, yeah, you, you I, might I say A minus because it doesn't have like the upside of some of the other corporations, but it's just like consistently good. Helion, I'm gonna give it a B minus. I think that like it's it's functional. Uh, I don't think it's um, I don't think it's bad. I mean, I you know, but I I just I don't like it, and I don't think that it's even at its full potential. I don't think it's broken. Yeah, I probably agree with that. I'd probably give it a B or a B minus. Okay. All right, you What's ready for next? the next one here? So far, I've done them in alphabetical order, so this is not a huge surprise. Interplanetary, Interplanetary cinematics. cinematics. Okay, so what's the deal here? We start off with 20 steel, 30 money. We start off with a building tag. And then um, every, event co- every event card gives you two money back. Yeah, so, cinematics is awesome. Cinematics is pretty good. Um, first thing that this makes me think of is going for um, the builder milestone right like this is the core this is the corp where you do that because you, you start you start off with one building tag you have all this steel so yeah it's like easy path to builder cinematics is is insane like if you just like look at it on its face you start with 70 cash right i mean and the thing that makes it so good is like the reason that we were tar- talking about earlier which is that you start with the cash on turn one not on turn you know, eight or something or five by the, you know, by the time that Helion's ability is paid off and giving you some, some of that cash back or whatever, you already had turn five. Whereas like cinematics just gives you 70 cash. It's just like, here you go. Yeah. And, but you know, it, as you've been mentioning this whole time, it's totally dependent on you having good cards in your hand that work with it, building cards. It's right? true. But the way that this really, the, the way that, that cinematics usually plays out is that you, you have something in your opening hand that is useful as a steal. I mean, it's almost, it's very rare that you have no useful building tags in your opening 10. But even yeah. if it happens, you're gonna see so many cards in the draft or the first two generations that you can usually set up your plays to take to play your other engine building cards on turn one and two and just, and just save that cash for turn two or three for your steal and draft something. So it's, it's very rare, like you, you are correct that Having the restriction of using steel does add an element of, you know, vulnerability to that starting seventy. But the thing is, it's just so unlikely that you're not going to be able to find something advantageous with it over the first three generations. Like you're, you're, you're it, yeah, you know, and you get to choose how you how you play those out. So you can generally find a sequence that still maximizes your your um, your tempo or whatever. Like I, it usually does not hold you back. That's true. I mean, there's just so many building cards. I mean, like, I, I'm looking at them right now. There's over 70 building cards with building tags on them. So, yeah, that's a pretty sizable portion of the card pool. Well, the other thing, too, is that the, the event, the playing, getting two cash back on events is actually also very good because there's so many cheap events, right? Like, like think, about, think about cinematics compared to Credit Corp. Credit Corps, you would say, is like one of the most generically powerful corporations just because it starts you with so much money. Cinematic starts you with 13 more money. Like, it's just like, oh, you, you like 57 cash? Well, how about 70? And then in addition, like, it's not clear that you're going to actually make less money with this effect than you would with Credit Corps. I mean, you, you might, depending on how you structure the game, but you could easily play you know, 10 event cards. I mean, that that routinely happens when you look at the end of those games. Like, it's very common that people have, you know, eight to 10 event cards in their in their, in their their pile. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, particularly if you have a passive way to draw cards, cinematics gets really good because, you know, a lot of these cheap events that you wouldn't buy uh, out of your, you know, draft cards or whatever, like if you just get like, you know, um, What's you know like the the one that lets you uh, take people's uh, 
uh, viral, you know, virus, virus or something like yeah, that. Like, virus, yeah. like this is the kind of card that you would never, well, not never, but rarely are you going to buy this card unless it's late game. But if you get this passively, it just makes you money when you play it, right? Like, yeah. Um, and so I think that that ability on cinematics, like technology demonstration, like here's a card. Oh, you just get two cash back. Like you're going to play that card if you draw it passively. Uh, yeah. Even cards like release of inert gases. I mean, there's just tons of these like cheaper event cards. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Like I, the more, you know, on its surface, like interplanetary cinematics doesn't feel like a corp that would play a lot of events. You know what I mean? Like, but when you think about it more, it's just what you're saying. It's like you need to play the cheap events because a lot of the big, like the expensive events, I don't think uh, gel well with this corp. The cheap ones do, though. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah, it's also worth noting that like just, just in a vacuum, cinematics is good, but then there's a few cards that just make it completely broken. So... Um, you know, like there's the uh, Earth Office. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the the picture of that one, but or not the Earth Office Media Group. Um, oh yeah. Do I have it down here? Let's see. Yeah, I do. Um, Media Group, right? Like if yeah. you get Media Group and Cinematics together, or like what if you get Media Group, Cinematics, and um, uh, Shoot, I'm blanking on the name. It's the uh, oh, here we go. Optimal arrow breaking, right? Like oh yeah. Like when course. you start to when you start to get the these combination of cards together, that's when you just get like these completely like just you just feel like you're you're breaking the game. And like I I compare that to Helion, where like even if you do what Helion is telling you to do, it doesn't seem like you are breaking the game open. Whereas if you get cinematics and media group and arrow breaking. Like all of a sudden, you just feel like you just feel like you're generating so much advantage uh, playing cards that I, I don't know. I like it just feels broken. Yeah, that's a that is a really fun and awesome broken thing to do with uh, cinematics. Like, how do you feel about um, advanced alloys here? Like, for me, advanced alloys, I think is powerful if you get it early. Um, we, we've sort of been, at least I have been sort of debunking the importance of this card to myself recently. You know, a lot of the people we stream to kind of pointing this out to us. Like, it's it's really good if you get it early, but if you get it late, it's not worth it anymore because the, the cost, because of the cost offset. Um, however, if, if this is like, to me, if you got this like turn one with cinematics, I would definitely take it and I think it'd be worth it. Oh, completely. Like on turn one with cinematics, it just nets you eight cash. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, so you even take... gen gen two or three maybe is when I would think about it. Completely. I mean, advanced alloys with cinematics is completely busted. I mean, you basically, if you have it in your opener, it costs you. You know, alloys cost you twelve to play. You know, yeah. three to buy, nine to play, and then you've got twenty steel sitting there. So you just already netted eight cash, right? Yep. And then anything that you do. Uh, down the road to generate, you know, just production of steel or titanium gets you additional cash. So advanced alloys with cinematics, I think, is the best start. I mean, it's even better than with Fogolog that starts you with 10 titanium or whatever. Um, and I totally agree with what you're saying, though, that like there is a window of opportunity for advanced alloys. Now, one thing that's interesting is that um, in general, if you have steel or titanium, I usually recommend, or my my you know like my the best strategy I think is to spend those first whenever you can, because of what you were saying before is that you don't know if you're going to run out of targets and you don't want to have those you don't want to have a bunch of steel rotting in your uh, in your hand yeah. at the end. You want to you want to spend it as soon as you can. Yeah. But if you have advanced alloys in your opener and the first couple generations, but you you want to sequence it so you get your engine going first. You can delay playing the alloys, and then you can just let your your um, steel and titanium build up for a little bit and favor money or credits first. So that that is a way that like changes things up a little bit. But if you have alloys and inter, inter, interplanetary cinematics, you, I mean that that's just that's a completely busted start. And like think about that. Like we, we part of what makes planetary interplanetary cinematics so good is that it's generically great, 
But we've already identified two combos, one using like event cards and one using advanced alloys that makes it feel busted. Right. 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 I mean, like that's that's amazing flexibility on 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 like a, a corporation that's just generically so good. Totally. I, I hear you. Um, yeah. And on top of that, there's a lot of a lot of spaces on Mars itself that it will give you more titanium. There's a lot of cards that'll do that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's not hard to get more steel production, you know, if you're playing mine or mining area or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a sweet corp, man. Well, you also, the last thing I would mention is that just, just having a random building tag on here is also amazing. Like, yes. uh, so if you're playing against mining guild or something like that, if that comes up, um, then yeah, you, you, you know, mining guild starts with two two of these building tags and so they're they're a little bit ahead of you but it's it's amazing how often it comes down to a race for that last tag when you're going for builder and just starting with one it, it's really yeah. really good and and you know particularly because cinematics is also geared to get you more tags because it starts you with all this steel and a lot of steel uh, well, I mean, you know, like you can only spend steel on cards with steel t on with building tags. So, yep. um, it's synergistic and, you know, th this is actually an amazing, amazing, uh, tag to have on it as an opener. Yep. Agreed. So, so I, what are like, what are any weaknesses with cinematics? I, I would say probably chiefly is just if you don't get building cards, if you know, you're losing the one advantage you have. Yeah, I mean, I think cinematics and I think cinematics is just a flat A. I think I think it may be. Uh, I think it's probably even better than Credit Core. I mean, um, like you're you're right that like if you have it is possible to have a, an opening set of hand a, a set of cards that just completely does not synergize with it, and that's why in a vacuum Credit Core is the best. Right, but it, I would say that if your opening corporations are credit core and inter, interplanetary cinematics, I would probably say seven times out of ten you're going to take cinematics. Yeah, um, that may be the case. Like, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think that, that weakness, I, the weakness I mentioned, is a weakness with a lot of corps. It's just, you know, and that's not saying that much, right? It's if I'm saying like, oh well. The it depends on what card you start with. Well, that's not much of a weakness because it's a card game, and then of course that's a thing. You know what I mean? Like it is, but like like some corporations are more are more crippled by that than yes. others, and and that's, that's right. why Cinematics is so good because you're you're right. Like if you it is possible to start off with no building tags, but like you're gonna get some in the first couple generation, right? Like yeah, in a three player game, you're opening up twelve cards. Well, you're going to see how many cards? You're going to see four plus three plus two plus one. So, um, eleven. You're going to see eleven new cards a generation in a draft. Yeah. Well, ten, because one of them wraps around. So you'll see ten new cards a generation. So you're going to, you know, by the time that you're thirty cards in at the end of generation three um, or two starting generation three like you're you're going you're going to have seen some steel cards or building yeah tag. for sure I, I agree with that yeah it, it's a it's a really powerful corp i would i would probably give it an a maybe an a minus um but yeah that's cinematics man that's a, that's some good stuff yeah i i love cinematics i think it's it's a it's a fun corporation to play too um because of the fact that you can get just some of these uh, just amazing yeah, synergies. Yeah, crazy combos. All right, what do we got next? All right, let's see here. Let's do Inventrix. Ah, Inventrix. Okay, so start with three cards with it, three extra cards with Inventrix, uh, and you don't have to buy those. You just get them. Uh, Forty-five money, a science tag, which is an interesting thing. We'll talk about. And then the ability to change global parameters plus or minus two. So this is this is kind of an interesting corp. We um, I don't know. Like I th I feel like we we sort of 
turned our opinions a little bit about it. I, I think that initially this was a corp none of us liked. But it's it's maybe not the strongest, but it's pretty fun. Yeah, I love Inventrix. I mean, Inventrix is like in particular, it's fun on the opening board because um, in general, you want to get planner with it. Yeah. So, like, if you're playing this on the expansion boards, that does take a little bit of the the thrill out of playing Inventrix because. At that point, you're just basically saying like, okay, I hope I rip something great out of these first three cards, you know? Whereas like on the original board, because you have the planner milestone, those three cards are powerful just because they're cards. It doesn't even matter what's on them, right? So like if you take yeah. if you take seven cards out of your opening 10 with Inventrix and then you draw up to 10, you know, like you can pretty quickly, and then like, let's say you have a way to play an ocean tile and you get those two, you're already at 12 cards, right? Like you. You can you can very quickly get to planner, um, and a lot of Inventrix's ability to be viable, I think, it depends on that. Right. Yeah, um, planner is definitely the way to go with Inventrix. Um, so the the most interesting thing about Inventrix, though, is something we tend to overlook, though, and that is the changing the global parameters thing, the effect. So, you know, I, this I think this is more powerful than we initially thought it was. It, if you if you guys have watched our streams at all and uh, the games we play <laughs> with Inventrix, we often forget that this is even a thing, and it's shame on us for doing that because I think it's pretty good. Like, there are situations where you can get some really powerful cards down early, like maybe a gen, possibly even two gens earlier than you might have originally. Like for example, um, like fish or you know anything that is a global parameter like that, like trees. Um, the ability to get down cards like this a gen or two early, you know, while it might not you know necessarily win you the game, but it's going to get you several points. And maybe a lot more greenery and stuff like that. It's pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, this does expose a weakness uh, in in my game is that I I will often forget these parameter restrictions um, when I'm playing yeah. Adventrix. And part of that is that when we stream, it's like I just don't remember stuff as well. Like when I'm um, if I'm playing just solo by myself, I, I rarely forget that sort of thing. But when you're streaming online uh, and you're trying to like interact with the chat and like you know stuff like that, it's quite common to forget it. But it's amazing how often it would have made a big difference. Like right. the, and you're totally right. Like if you get fish down a generation earlier, that just by itself is worth a point, which doesn't seem like much, but they add up. You know, like yeah. if, if you get that ability three or four times, like it's kind of worth three or four points over the course of the game. Right, and then, so pair that with the card adaptation technology. That, for this corp, it is godlike, because now, all of a sudden, you can, uh, and uh, sorry, it doesn't look, doesn't look like we have it to bring up, but adaptation technology basically makes it, in conjunction with this, for you to be able to change global parameters by plus or minus four. So now, if you have that, all of a sudden, you're bringing out your your cards like fish th three possibly four gens early and now we're talking big points D do they stack like that i don't even know i didn't i guess I I guess they really... i'm pretty sure they do i never realized that but like that's pretty sick actually yeah absolutely um, i've never i've never like put that into practice you know I, I could be wrong about that let us know in the comments if i am but like i'm pretty sure that's the case no i think you're probably right i mean the problem with adaptation adaptation technology, I think it costs twelve. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the card here, but um, yeah, I can look it up real quick. But I'm pretty sure it costs twelve, so it's it's a pretty yeah, it's big twelve. It's a pretty big investment, you know, like yeah, that's true. But it is, however, also a science tag. So let's and that's another thing to talk about with Inventrix. Another big thing to talk. Uh, Inventrix is very science themed, right? It's it's called Inventrix. There's a lot of inventors that work there. Doing stuff that's cool. So, this is a, this is a nice entry into into the science strategy. So, having that one science tag 
can really help you out. Like there's a lot of times where you might be, we, and we've seen this in our own streams, we, we're, we'll be fishing for that third science tag to get AI Central down. And you know, you just can't find it, can't find it. Well, you have one built in and it might not sound like a lot, but it can really push you over the top. Yeah, it's that science tag is com is com is like amazing because there's a bunch of cards that do require these uh, these science tag thresholds and starting off at one, it doesn't seem like it would make a big difference, but it really does. And um, I think that this is true most. It's most true when you're playing um, when you're playing against people who are a little less in it, or a little less experienced. Um, like if you're playing a really high level game with people that really know it, they're gonna cut cards like Quantum Extractor when they come around the draft. Yeah. But when you're playing with people that aren't that experienced, you will wheel Quantum Extractor. I mean, you'll get past this card. You know, cards like AI Central, you'll get past these cards. And so, making sure that you have your thresholds, you know, uh, met so that you can take advantage of that uh, is pretty good. And and um, you can get a feel for that pretty quickly in a game, you know, certainly if you're playing IRL, but if you're playing online, people will do things that just, you, you know, you just understand that they may not be the most experienced, like the type of cards that are coming around or this and that. And if you see that, you can really, really punish people by having enough science tags to take advantage of these, uh, these cards. Um, some other ones like anti-grab technology are really good. Uh, obviously, this is a little bit later in the game, but um, so yeah, tags I mean, are and, great. You know, anti grav, as you can see, it takes seven tags, and that's a really hard thing to get to. Well, with Inventor, it takes six tags, so it's more it's uh, more enticing. Yeah, worth noting. Uh, just a card I love with uh, with yeah. Inventrix is if you get research. I mean, it's pretty busted because research is just great on its own, and then you're already at three tags. Like it, it just opens up essentially almost all of the the card th you know the the collect the tags kind of cards for for uh science and on top of that you have two more cards that'll help you get planner yeah totally i love getting research with with inventrix i mean one thing that you do have to be careful with with inventrix is that uh and i i fall prey to this because um you know, when you're playing Inventrix, you want to get some science tags going. Is that you? You can't you can't ignore your economy with Inventrix because yeah, you don't start off with that much cash. Like forty five is not that much, and so um, like think about this in comparison to the beginner corporation where you start with forty two and ten cards, right? Like yeah, Inventrix is kind of like a nerfed beginner corporation, and um, you know, like in that sense, yeah. If you don't, if you don't build an engine with Inventrix pretty early, you can kind of just run out of cash. Like let's say you spend um, like a, a fairly significant portion of your 45 buying cards out of your opening hand to go for planner. And then like, let's say your first card is research or something like, like that. You know, research costs you 11 to play. So you haven't really done anything to get your economy going and like turn three or four, you might find out that you're just generating like, you know, 20 you know like not much like 20 cash from your terraforming rating and not much else and then and then you go through the middle portion of the game feeling like you're completely uh behind on engine and so uh, i think it's worth noting in, in inventrix that like probably one of the best ways to take take advantage of that is to um kind of play a standard game but then as you get to the middle part of the game see if you have the right cards to really to really take advantage of its ability and or science tags. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Um, I, I would say with Inventrix, it, it's the downside of Inventrix is it's a high skill ceiling corp. Like it's not a good corp for beginners or even intermediates. Like you have to be very good at this game to be to, to play Inventrix really well. And f frankly, we haven't done it that well. <laughs> yeah, um, I think like that's it, true. I think, I think um, I totally agree with you. And like part of why it's hard to play is that you end up with all these cards. And so yeah, then, then right. it's so important how you sequence them to maximize yep. value. Absolutely. And you're, and you're juggling all these global requirement changes in your head. And yeah, so it's, it's pretty tough. 
so yeah, like I don't know. Overall, I would probably give Inventrix like a C plus. Um, but here's the here's the thing: in the right hands, Inventrix can be like insanely good. But I, I would I would say like C plus at best a B. You know what I mean? I would like to say that it's insanely good in the right hands, but I actually don't really think it is. I mean, I think. I mean, you can definitely win with Adventrix. I'm not. I'm not claiming. Oh yeah, we can't. have. Yeah, I mean, I just think that uh, you know, it's it's probably a B minus. Um, it may it may even be a little worse than Helion. I, I'm. I don't know. I mean, I. I think it's probably a C plus corporation. I, I think it's probably uh, yeah. third tier. I, th- I think I go C plus. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's enough for uh, enough corporations for this first video. Uh, what do you think, Nima? Yeah, that seems like a good place to stop. That's like almost half of them. So yeah, um, stay tuned for the next half. Um, yeah, I hope you guys dug it. Uh, I'm, it's it's good. To, it's good to do strat again, right? Nate, does it feel good? Yeah, and I, it's funny because we did some of those initial strategy videos um, before we had like done the whole project, and I've played a lot more now. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't actually play a ton, but I've probably gotten another fifty games in since we, since we initially started doing the strategy videos. Easily, I would say. Yeah, so I feel like I'm better now. Yeah, you're better, Nate. You're just better. <laughs> you said it, you're not so, me. You're so much better. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, uh, check us out um, on YouTube and Twitch. Subscribe to us there. Uh, check out our Twitter at Cardboard Mars. Um, Until the next time, we'll see you and keep terraforming. All right, see ya.